We are talking about subtropical storm Alberto. Late evening on the 26th of May 2018, we find a subtropical storm with 40 mile an hour winds off the northwest coast of Cuba. Now it is moving northward at 13 miles an hour. It's a minimal system, but that 40 mile an hour wind, it actually extends out over 100 miles. So it's a very broad system in terms of the wind. But that, watch what happens to the wind in the projection tomorrow from the National Hurricane Center. Going from 50 to 60 miles an hour by mid-afternoon, becoming a stronger tropical storm. And then maintaining that wind speed. 65 is not too far from hurricane status. So we'll watch it very carefully as it approaches the northern Gulf of Mexico. Making landfall really anywhere from the Mississippi coast into the Florida Panhandle. And exactly where the center is, that's going to control the impacts. The greatest impacts are going to be on the right side of the track. So look at various computer models and notice going to tomorrow midday, all the models are pointing toward the northwest. Now, if you use your mind, you would say, oh, well, it's going to keep going to the northwest. That's not the case. The steering winds are constantly changing. During the day tomorrow, the steering winds will likely turn it toward the north at some point. Now, I say likely because it's not a certainty. Notice a widespread in models a couple hundred miles across, so some take it toward the Florida uh, Big Bend, some take it almost to the Mississippi coast, and even Monday, notice how some models are still in the Gulf, others are in central Alabama. This is the uncertainty in forecasting tropical weather, and that's why you use a forecast cone to talk just about the center. But it's also really important to know that that single line is not where the impact is. If you take any one of those lines, the impact is going to be on the right side, the biggest impact in terms of storm surge and the threat for isolated tornadoes. So some of the computer models I shown, I've shown you are these here, and there are dozens of computer models. You can make your own, and not one of them is correct, not all the time, and even most of the time, the ones that are correct are not always correct. So we watch all the data we can get. We watch the satellite to see where something is, and until it gets really close, you just never know the exact details. So keep in mind, for much of this past week, we've talked about a tropical disturbance, something that satellites show us much more clearly than they showed us 20 years ago. So we see these way in advance. Computer models generate storms way in advance, but you never get the details until you get close. This disturbance became an invest or an investigation. The hurricane hunters flew into it and they found that eventually it did show circulation enough to declare it as a subtropical storm, which is up here. So it can jump categories, especially because things can develop fast and they can weaken fast. In terms of threat, hurricane, that's your biggest threat. Tropical wave, very common. But we're watching this subtropical storm, which is a hybrid of what we consider a regular tropical storm, which turns out has no fronts in a typical tropical storm. It has the strongest winds right around the center of the eye. But if you take a regular low pressure system, which uh, a nor'easter, for example, a winter storm, those are centers of low pressure that have fronts, a cold front and a warm front. So a subtropical storm is a hybrid of a tropical storm and a regular storm, but the impact, the punch, is still going to be the same. What I anticipate sometime tomorrow, the, this will take the true formation of a tropical storm. Either way, the winds will range from 40 to 73 miles an hour in a tropical storm, and the impact, again, it's water being pushed up to the coast, potential tornadoes, and heavy, heavy rain. So here is just one computer model projection, 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday. The center of the storm still down in the east central Gulf of Mexico, pretty much due west of Tampa, Florida. Notice it has bands of rain, and these bands may not be exactly where you see them projected, but tropical storms and hurricanes tend to be made of bands where if you are not in the band, the weather is not that bad. If you're under the band, then the weather is a little more excessive. So the winds... The, at the rate this thing is approaching us for tomorrow, we'll pick up uh, an offshore wind. And notice even at 9 o'clock in the afternoon, in the evening rather, it's not projecting very heavy rain here. The heaviest rain projected around the core of the storm, but that may not be the case. We have to plan for what could be heavy rain here. And as this approaches, even though you see the wind feeding into the that's the winds at the low levels of the atmosphere. The wind around it is actually carrying moisture, carrying water to the coastline, and that's the storm surge. Now that's Sunday evening at 9 o'clock. Monday morning at 6 a.m., this computer model shows it basically due south of Mobile Bay. 
But again, it could be 100 miles farther to the west, 100 miles farther to the east. If it slows down, it could be farther south. If it speeds up, it could be touching the coastline. These, again, are things that we will not have a more clear picture until we get closer to it, just like everything in life. The farther are, you are away from it, the harder it is to see the detail. Monday midday, this model shows that that's when the real rain would be picking up along the coastline. And again, it all depends upon exactly where the center point of this approaches the coast and makes landfall. So keep up with what's going on. Heavy rain, without a doubt, is something we're all going to be looking at. And just through Tuesday evening, easily half a foot along our coastline, which would be to the right of the path. Inland counties, you'd have a little less. Not everyone's going to get a whole bunch of rain, and even though in, on the Gulf Coast you can get five inches of rain in one day in your neighborhood, when you get it over a county or two, that's a big difference. That's what leads to the threat of flooding. So keep in mind, we've had a lot of rain lately. The soil is soaked, it is saturated, and that means with a moderate wind, a tree could fall. And if one tree falls on one power line that feeds one subdivision, you have hundreds of people with no electricity from a storm that is not necessarily that strong. People always ask, well, what will happen? You never know. It just takes one tree to make a big difference. There's a tropical storm warning for all of the Alabama coast and the Florida panhandle. That means watch for the highest winds to first impact the coastline and work their way northward. And tropical storm force wind is 40 miles an hour or greater. So that's what's uh, going to continue through Monday. Along the Mississippi Gulf Coast, it's a tropical storm watch, which, mean, which means watch because there still is uncertainty as to exactly how this will approach the coastline. We are all under a flash flood watch. It will not take a lot of rain in a short period to create rapid flooding. We also have a storm surge watch. Potentially, we could see the water pu uh, being pushed ashore by the wind along our coasts, in the bays, in the rivers that feed the bays and the coastline. That water could be two to four feet. That's standing water, not the rain water that you would add to it. It's as simple as a steady wind blowing across the Gulf of Mexico, and at the beaches, it pushes the water inland, and as long as that wind keeps on blowing, the water moves to a certain level, it stops, and it won't go down until the wind shifts, and then the water gets pushed out to the Gulf of Mexico. So when you talk about subtropical storm Alberto, the biggest impact, the likely day with the biggest impact is going to be Monday. We will keep watching this. You need a safety plan. Use your free News 5 weather app. Stay updated. We will keep you updated on WKRG TV, WKRG.com, and on Facebook. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.